Any time research is to be conducted in Indian country, a research proposal must have the approval of the IRB within both the institution, such as a university, and also the tribe or tribes in which a study is to take place. Research proposals and even proposing a plan of research to tribal nations can be difficult and confusing, especially if an established research review board is not already in place within the tribe or tribal community. Further complications can arise whenever websites or other online resources are either outdated or the agencies which manage the information may have technical issues. Other issues arise when making cold calls as sometimes they can be fruitless if the researcher is unable to establish a personal connection or unaware of the tribe's arrangement of their particular offices or departments. Face-to-face -face communication, often idealized as the best way to work with folks in Indian country, can be difficult and costly, especially when working with multiple tribes, as a researcher may work with a limited budget and other constraints which makes travel impractical. It's Jay, and it's Tango. My name is Patrick Austin Freeland, I'm Wind Clan in the Muscogee Creek Nation, and welcome to Common Ground, Working for Consent and Compliance. So what exactly is an IRB? Why does the role of the IRB have such significance and importance in Indian country? And how do tribal nations play a role in the research process? An IRB, short for Institutional Review Board, is a committee which reviews and determines whether or not any proposed research may be conducted within a particular institution or tribe. Required by federal law under the public welfare under the protection of human subjects, the committee is comprised of local individuals which understand the context in which research is to be conducted. The committee focuses on how the research will affect participants and ultimately has the authority or agency to grant approval for research to begin. An IRB will typically address three main concerns. First, whether or not the risks of the research is worth the burden. Second, whether or not the study design is beneficial to the people being studied while advancing knowledge. And third, whether or not the proposed research obtains free and informed consent from potential study participants. This is especially important. All research has some degree of risk and burden, whether it's risk to the individual's privacy or the burden of filling out a survey. It's up to the IRB to determine if the risks and burdens associated with the proposed research ultimately benefit the community. Understanding the study design can be useful to determine whether or not the proposed research has a balance which is acceptable to the community. Imbalance would be research that harms the community while offering virtually no benefit. Even if the harm to benefit ratio is balanced, the IRB may still choose to reject the proposal as minimize harm and greater beneficence should be the ultimate research ideal. While an IRB or a research review committee does not necessarily have the specific duties of scientific review, it is up to the IRB to take on a sort of ethical review. This is especially espoused in this idea of balance. But it's also important that the IRB have some background of scientific understanding and that the research proposal have complete scientific methodologies laid out, as the IRB may have specific questions about the research, and then the researchers should be able to address any questions that the IRB may have, and any concerns can be quickly clarified. A key part of the IRB review should be in identifying how the researcher intends to gain consent from individuals to be part of the study. This also includes detail on how the individual's privacies will be protected. While the idea of human subjects research can seem cold and impersonal, it's simply a standardized way of saying that a particular study will involve people, even in something as simple as a survey. Research proposals submitted to IRBs usually have five main parts. The first is an application, which contains basic categorical information, investigators, institutional information, and more, depending on what the IRB may require. The second part is the research protocol, which specifically outlines the study design and how data will be obtained from individuals. The third part is usually sample documentation of how study participants will be given informed consent. The fourth part will be all materials which will accompany the study, as, which, as well as materials which will be utilized for recruitment into the study. And finally, the proposal will include supporting materials such as letters of support, researcher qualifications, or other materials. 
The review board may have questions about particular aspects of the research, in which case the researcher has the obligation to address any inconsistencies, concerns, or vagaries which may make the particular section of the research proposal unclear. This can usually be accomplished with a phone call or a teleconference. The board may have ethical concerns with the research, in which it is important for the committee to deliberate and understand the risks and benefits, the study design, and the consent and protection of potential study participants. Finally, once the IRB has addressed any and all concerns with the research and weighed the pros and cons, the board will either approve or deny the research. Should the board approve, a letter of support should be drafted which explicitly states that the board has reviewed and accepted the research proposal and subsequently signed and submitted to the researcher so the research may begin. The researcher, with the approval of the IRB, will begin to conduct research within the explicit confines of the study design, and should any modification be made to the study, must be approved first by the IRB. It is also important to note that data from the study may not be used in other studies without IRB approval. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Patrick Austin Freeland. In service and friendship, Maru. Special thanks to Dr. Linda Prokopi in the Natural Resources Social Science Lab of the Department of Forestry and Natural Resources at Purdue University. Also, a special thanks to the Ecological Sciences and Engineering Interdisciplinary Graduate Program and the Native American and Educational Cultural Center.